guys doing? My name is Christina Faith. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming out tonight. Woo! Um, <laughs> I am a writer, producer, director, um, and I wrote this book called Single and Anxious, uh, Discovering True Contentment and Purpose Through Devotion to Christ. And it's really just about being the authentic self, being the person that you were created to be. And the crazy thing is that when I was a single, um, I'm married now, but I wrote this book when I was single, which is crazy. And a lot of singles have given me flack about it because I'm not single anymore. But I was like, I spent my entire life single. And um, I wrote this book because I wanted to show people my journey about what it was like for me to be a single person and go from a life in Christ, from a life out of Christ to a life in Christ. So cool. let's walk through this journey. So, Christina, um, so the book is Single and Anxious, yes. and you have Single and Anxious, which is the web series, yeah. which is going into season three. three. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, tell us what the difference is between the two. Okay, so I have to tell people the difference between the two all the time. So, the, the digital series is a fictional base of what life was like for me and my friends as singles, mixed with love, mixed with lies, mixed with crime. Um, each of our characters go through all kinds of things as singles, um, as young millennial singles. And then the book is the answer to all of the things that they go through. Uh, so when we look at uh, our main character, Carissa, and we look at the choices that she makes with men, um, and then we look at just where her choices through the seasons are taking her, a big portion of it is based on uh, just her emptiness as a human being and her need for love, but not realizing that she needs a love that's deeper. Um, and so what I wanted to do between the series and the book, the issue is, is that they became the same thing, not because they are the same thing, but because one was birthed out of another. So Sing Single Anxious, the books is nonfiction. It's based on my life, um, as well as those around me. And it uses scripture as the basis. And Single and Anxious, the series is fictional. And that uses fictional characters as the basis to tell a story about love, lies, and crime. Um, so they're completely different things with the same name however one can answer the other so one is meant to be entertaining while the other is meant to be growth giving okay. so you know there are like 50,000 or probably 50 million okay. uh, Christian singles oh, books yeah. right like every person Everybody who calls a themselves a believer yeah. has, wants to tell people what it means to be a Christian woman or okay. if, you know that that's unmarried uh -huh. or whatever and so I guess what is the difference? What separates single and anxious from those books in the market? Well, so I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't want to do a book on sex. I think that's one of the big differences. Like when I've read all of the single books, because I read them all when I was, uh, thank you, when I was uh, single, and I didn't want to do a book about how to keep your body pure. I wanted to do a book about how to be clean from the inside out and to develop yourself as a person, not while you wait for a mate, because you may never get a mate. Um, but while you're living here on this earth eternally. Um, and so I think the difference is, is just that I use my own personal life. Um, if I also came up in a time where um, there was this whole emotionally pure, you don't date until you're, you don't date until you're married season. And so I think that a big part of that is us unlearning a lot of that stuff um, and learning what it means to be able to date. Um, I have friends who still think, you know, you shouldn't date if you're a Christian. Um, and granted, when I met my husband, we had the desire to, to be married, and we both talked about that before we started dating, but then we date, um, and we, we call it courting, which is the same thing. And so for me, I just wanted to tell my story. Um, I, there's, there's no reason, for example, I am a, um, I got married a 30-year-old virgin. With my background, I still don't know how it happened, but the grace of God. And so I kind of like walk people through uh, just different choices that I made um, and different things that my friends said to me that kind of triggered me to want to protect my my uh, my virginity, my sexuality. Um, and so I don't think it's any different than any other Christian book. It's just a different um, a different way that I approach it because I approach it from my life and not from someone else's life. Okay. Um, what is your goal for a single woman or a single man that picks up this book? Like what what when they open up chapter one, mm -hmm. what do you want for them to get, and what do you want them to um, get when they close the book at the end? Um, man, so I had a a person who recent who who reached out to me after they started reading chapter one, um, and one of the things is they said, "Wow, I see myself." Um, and that's what I want people to see. I want people to see themselves. I don't want them to see this far off image of holiness that they can't attain. 
but I want them to see the brokenness of who they are. Um, I want them to see um, how their background shape the way that they think about relationships, the way that they think about themselves um, it, it, as individuals. Um, and I want people to walk away with hope. Like that's the biggest thing that I want from this book is that people walk away with hope, not just that, oh, I can wait until I get married, um, but more so that this time as, as a single is probably the most precious time that I will ever get because it is an unfiltered time that you can allow the Lord to, um, to clean your heart, to purify you, not for your mate, but for yourself so that you can glorify him. Um, and so th that's my biggest desire is that people, when they pick up this book, um, that they look at it and they admit, number one, I'm single and I'm anxious and that's okay. Like, I think people see the title sometimes and they're like, oh, I'm anxious. I'm not anxious. I'm like, yes, you are. Like, we all yearn for love. We yearn for someone's love and that's okay. But what do you do with the time as you're waiting? And if it never happens, will you be content in that place? Um, and that's something that I personally, that's kind of like why the book happened because I wasn't content. Like I was blogging about the fact that I really wanted a relationship, but I wasn't dealing with my own heart. Um, and so that's really where the book comes from. It comes from that, that, that despair that I was feeling. Hmm. So what are your thoughts on the current state of dating? And, I, and I'm talking about in and outside of the church. Oh man, I'm all for social media dating. Like I met my husband on, on Facebook, uh, but I think I have a friend, um, she's a young girl. I'm 35, praise God. And so she's in her like 20s, her, her early 20s. And like, she's always on Tinder and stuff. And uh, we talk about kind of like where she's at. And I'm like, if you would just take some of this time and unplug from that so that you can know who you are, it'll be easier for you to find someone that's compatible with you. Um, and I think dating now is just, is, it's almost like speed dating, which isn't a problem. Like some great things come out of speed dating. I think the problem is that we're looking for people to fill, fulfill our needs uh, when we don't even know what our own needs really are. We're just masking over a lot of things that we're struggling with. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, building your mate and things like that. But if you don't build yourself, how can you build anything else? And so that's that's my biggest thing. Like, I'm, I'm all for Christian mingle. I'm all for Tinder. Um, I am not for the hookup culture of sex just, you know, on a... Um, on a platter, on some LL Cool J stuff. Um, what was it called? Pink panties on what? Is it? Pink panties on a platter. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Um, but yeah, I think just in general, like it's cool to date. It's not a problem because as you go through it, um, if you're if you're doing with doing it with wisdom and maturity, you're like, ah, oh, now you're not for me. Um, but I've experienced some people that have gotten married off of Christian Mingle, off of Tinder, off of Facebook, off of Instagram, and. Uh, my space um, because we don't go outside like we used to I just think that a big part of the problem is that we're not looking inward first we're looking outward and we're looking for people to satisfy our needs instead of us realizing that the Lord is the only one that can satisfy our need okay one more question before I open it up yeah. um, so and you kind of alluded to this in the very beginning um, yeah, yeah. so what do you say to those who criticize a married married woman who puts out a book about <laughs> singlehood you know, like they say, okay, you're far, you got yours, you far, you're far away and far removed from the quote unquote struggle. Uh, I get it. I struggled for 10 years though, y'all. That's what I say. Like I didn't, and, you know, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get married because I was looking. I got married because he wasn't looking and I wasn't looking. Um, and I didn't ask the Lord for a list of 35 different things. I really just asked the Lord that he loved the Lord more than he loved me. Um, and I think a big part of it is like, I'm not going to go to, you know, someone who's broke for financial advice. I'm not. I'm going to go to someone who has experience with managing money or someone who has had uh, success with coming out of debt. Um, and so I think that as a single, you have, it has its place of, uh, talking to other singles but I think if you if you have you know a married person or a couple that is living a way that reflects what you desire you should go and ask for help or ask for some wisdom um and then I also I'm also like as soon as y'all get engaged y'all want to come and ask questions <laughs> and it's kind of like if you ask those questions before you will probably be able to get some answers that will stop you from dating someone who is completely opposite and bipolar to what you need or desire. 
Um, and normally it's when my single friends, after they done, you know, went through their stuff that they want to talk. And it's like, you know, don't look at, now if a married person is kind of like, oh, I have arrived, I'm at the pinnacle, you don't want advice from them. Like that's the reality. But if they're caring and they're loving and they're not legalistic and they're showing grace and they're just telling you about what worked for them and what didn't work for them, that's something different. Um, but yeah, like I'm not, I'm not going to go to a single person and ask for marriage advice. Right? I'm going to go to someone who has either been married or who has counseled married people that's single. But at the same time, I want somebody who has years of experience. And so if it's somebody who was single from 18 to 21 and got married, I don't know if I would ask them. But if it was somebody who was single for like 10, 15 years, I probably would ask them, like, how did you remain holy? <laughs> like, honestly. Um, and so, yeah, I... You know, I didn't really choose single anxious. Single anxious chose me at this point in life because I would love nothing more than to um, allow single anxious to move on. But I think singleness isn't a sickness, it's a cure. And I think that's the most important thing to realize that your singleness, wherever you are in it, whether you are single and engaged or you are engaged, uh, which, you know, you should go clap, uh, congrats on your engagement if you are engaged. Um, and so I just think that in all stages of life, you should go to people who have been where you are and have done it successfully or have learned from their mistakes. It's kind of like if 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 I'm a mother, if I'm becoming a mother, I want to go find seasoned mothers or women who may not be mothers but have mothered other children throughout their lives. So I haven't had kids, but at the same time, I've raised nep nieces and nephews. And so when I was nine years old, I started changing pampers and, and babysitting. So I don't come with the perspective of I've never held a baby, I've never cared and helped raise kids. Um, so that's different. But if I am a mother, I want to get some advice from other mothers. Um, because the reality is, I think Amanda Seale said it, that marriage won't be a milestone in my life, right? Which is a complete lie. You can add me on that. Um, because if you get married, you get married to the right person, it will be a milestone in your life. It won't define your life. Right, it is not the most important thing ever, but if two people start to work as a unit or are moving towards one goal or towards goals, then it will be a, be a milestone. And I think that sometimes, because we've been hurt in the past in our singleness, um, we tend to want to shy away from advice from married people. Um, but sometimes, you know, you get people who just didn't have good marriages and they got divorces, and I'm listening like, okay, well, how did that happen? Um, because it's always something to learn because it's a relationship that grows. Um, but I also don't think marriage is the key for everyone, right? I don't think everybody's going to be married. And so I, I was one of those people that really thought that I wasn't going to be married. Like, and I was okay with that. Like, I was 100% okay with it. Um, and sometimes my husband thinks, thinks I function as though I'm still not married. Um, but we're learning how each other functions and works. And so for me, I'm learning how to now be married, even after five years, and be able to communicate and move forward. Um, and so there are some things in my singleness that I could have done better that would have allowed me to be a better, better married woman. So, but marriage is not the pinnacle of life. It is not. But it is a milestone in your life that will continue with you until you either dead or divorce one or the other. <laughs> and even if you get divorced or dead, you still got to walk through the issues that you went through in those times. So, um, yeah. Do cool. you have any questions? How long did it take you to write? Child, this book right here, this is the fifth rewrite of this book. Um, I probably started writing this book about 10 years ago. I wrote it about three or four different times, but the last time, three or four months, that I went back to it and she put everything in order and said, do this. And so probably about three or four months. Um, mm -hmm. What's more challenging, writing nonfiction or writing uh, web series for fiction characters? <laughs> I think writing period is challenging. I don't think there's a, oh man. Um, dang. Probably nonfiction is a little bit more challenging because you need to make sure that you are telling a truth, right? Um, fiction, you just need to make sure that the characters are growing in an arc. Um, but at the same time, I think they both uh, require a birthing in a sense. Like you're, you, you gotta come out with something at the end. So whenever there's a birth, there is, you know, there are contractions, uh, there's the pain of, you know, the child developing, the book developing, or the script developing. Um, writing is just not easy. Um, it's rewarding, but it's not easy. Um, even if you love to write, there, it's almost like an agony sometimes mixed with this crazy joy. So for me anyway.
what growth and development in your creativity mm -hmm. did you experience mm -hmm. after the fetish was, was over? Like you said, okay, I'm done. And, and creativity on this one? Um, I think this book helped me to kind of like solidify my creativity in a sense, to solidify that I had the ability to command scripture as well as the ability to tell a really engaging story so that people will be, um, will be drawn in with it. Um, I think growth wise, I learned how to stick and stay, um, with it, with the topic, not go off topic. Cause that's my big thing. I can go off topic in a second. Um, and so I think that, you know, the process of writing through an outline was the, probably the biggest thing that I, I learned from this book, um, which then translated into the series and the short film and the feature. Um, the, and my seminary professor always told me the outline is the most important thing. And so I think creatively it taught me how to kind of like hone in on the outline um, as opposed to just writing, which that's what I was doing in the past was just writing and not really outlining and being able to walk through what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So what's next? What's your next project? That was Everyone, gonna be my question too. What's next, Christina? Um, so what's next is season three of Single and Anxious. Um, what's next next for this? This book is gonna get a, a redesign, um, just to make it more engaging. Um, I think nonfiction wise, I'd really like to write a devotional for creatives. Um, there's so many mornings I have woken up. And just have been like, I know I need to work, but I need some kind of inspiration. Um, and then I've I've developed the habit of finding it, but I wonder how many other creatives just need the Lord to speak to them in the morning and not on a basic devotional of this is how you should live, but this is how you can live creatively without a border. Um, and so that I think is probably my next nonfiction project is devotional. Well, thank you, Christina. Hey, hey, hey. You should go buy his book. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, they should come to Heart Space. Yes, this weekend. Yes, tomorrow. this weekend. 32 tomorrow. East, Bro East, East Baltimore, Baltimore, East Baltimore Avenue. Avenue. Yes. I won't Lansdale. be here, but Tracy will be. I will be all day. And Candace. All day. Yep. Never speak into your life whether you like it or not. Yes, because that's what we do. That's what they do.